The next concept, the next term which we need to know about the external sector is purchasing power parity. So what is this purchasing power parity and how is it different from exchange rates? See, purchasing power parity is the number of units of country's currency required to buy the same amount of goods and service in the domestic market as one dollar would buy in the US. So what is it saying basically in a simpler term? See, in India, you may buy one liter of milk for 20 rupees. Okay, so one liter of milk is for 20 rupees. Okay, in US, same one liter of milk would be bought for one dollar. Okay, so what does it mean? See, if you calculate in the terms of exchange rate, one dollar is equal to 70 rupees. Okay, but if you calculate in terms of purchasing power parity, here one dollar is equal to what? Is equal to 20 rupees, right? One dollar is equal to 20 rupees, right? Why? Because purchasing power parity is defined as how much amount of money is required in India to buy the same amount of goods which is bought in US. Right now I am comparing India and US. Okay. In US, I was buying 1 liter of milk for $1. But in India, one liter of milk is bought for what? For 20 rupees, right? So this tells us the real scenario of standard of living in the country, right? So just with the exchange rates, you cannot determine the standard of living. You need to know what amount of currency is required to buy the same amount of goods which you bought in the other country. Okay, so we call this as purchasing power parity. Now, see, there are types of currencies which you come across in your books. Okay, so types of currencies in the sense like hard currency, soft currency, cheap money, dear money, right? You would be coming across in the question papers as well. So we need to know what are these types of currencies. The first type of currency is hard currency. What is this hard currency? See, the strongest currency of the world which has the highest level of liquidity. Highest level of liquidity. What is this liquidity? What is basically liquidity? Liquidity means how easily you can convert that money in a form which you can buy goods and services. Right? So, the strongest currency in the world, by that itself you know that it is a dollar, right? The strongest currency in the world and which has highest liquidity. See, you can take the dollar and go to Pakistan or you can take the dollar and go to Sri Lanka. Wherever country, whichever country you go, they will be ready to accept the dollar and give back their country's money, right? It is having a strong liquidity. So, hard currency means the strongest currency of the world which has the highest liquidity. So, the opposite of this is what? Hard currency. The opposite of this is soft currency. What is the soft currency? The best example of the soft currency is Indian money, Indian rupee. See, it is the currency that is easily available in any economy, right? That is called as soft currency, okay? So, Indian rupee is a soft currency. Now, the next one is hot currency. What does this hot currency mean? See, if 
any hard currency what is a hard currency which is having a strongest liquidity right which is strongest currency in the world right so if any hard currency is exiting exiting in the sense what is going out of any economy at a faster pace of time so any currency any hard currency not any currency so see in us if rupees is going out at a faster pace who's going to worry no one is going to worry right so it is the hard currency if any hard currency is going out of economy at a faster pace we call that as hot currency so always hot currency will be only a hard currencies right now coming to heated currency what does this heated currency mean this heated currency is used to denote the domestic currency which is under the pressure which is under the heat of depreciation due to the hard currencies exit see when a hard currency is exiting if a dollar is exiting out of india okay obviously it is a pressure on indian currency because we are having more amount of indian rupee right we are giving back the dollars right so when a hard currency is exiting out of a country the country's domestic currency will face depreciation right so the domestic currency is feeling the heat and pressure so we call that domestic currency as heated currency so hard soft now it is heated currency heated currency is the currency which is in pressure right now coming to cheap currency what happens in the cheap currency uh, when a government is trying to purchase the bonds see the government you know that the government will sell and purchase bonds bills everything right so it would have given some stipulated amount of time say for example 2 years okay in 2 years the government will pay the interest for you as well that is a different story but the government would have said that in 2 after 2 years i'll buy that bond now the government has decided to buy the bond in 1.5 years itself right so what will happen as a result the currency will be circulating in the market why the government is giving back the money to the consumers or the customers and getting the bonds back right so the currency is available easily we call this as cheap currency okay there is other word which is called as dear currency see in the monetary policy also you will be seeing that cheap money policy and dear money policy it is nothing but as i said cheap money policy means the currency is easily available how is it easily available the government buys back its bond which has been given to the customers now dear money policy means what the government sells the bond to the customers so that it takes the money away from the customers and the money in the market circulation is reduced right these are the different types of currencies okay now the major important terms in this external sector what is it the first one is fdi foreign direct investment and what is the other term the other term is fii foreign institutional investment now let us see what is fdi c 
see fdi means investment which is happening for a longer period of time okay it is happening for a longer period of time right and if it is an investment what will happen it is a direct investment in the sense i'll give you an example a person is there okay and he is coming let us take anil ambani okay or mukesh ambani he is going to us and investing in a film okay he is opening a film there in us so from india he is taking money to us and going and investing so what happens here the money will be for longer period of time okay so since this is a for a longer period of time some amount of management control will also be with the people who are in us right so management control will also with them what will the fdi do here since it is going and investing in a film it will create the employment opportunity as well okay so these are the three important points which you have to know about fdi so what is fdi fdi is the direct investment in the country's economy right so since it is a foreign a foreign player coming and investing directly in india we call that as a foreign direct investment what will happen in the foreign direct investment first it will be for a longer period of time exiting is not so easy then it will create employment opportunities then it will give you some amount of management control to the person who are living there okay this is fdi now coming to fii what is fii foreign institutional investment see what is this foreign institutional investment it means that you are investing in shares okay you are investing in shares and stocks what happens a foreign investor if he thinks that he wants to buy the share of tata okay he may buy the share of tata say for example if he is buying it for 100 dollars today okay tomorrow he may feel that the price of the tata shares will come down so what he thinks that he sells in the evening itself for 120 dollars okay what is happening here he is investing the amount in the shares not directly into the economy okay since he is investing in the shares it is easier for him to take away the money which he has invested he can invest in the morning and he can take back in the evening okay that is the reason the most of the countries would prefer fdi than fii because at any point of time the foreign institutional investment can create collapse in the economy because what if all the fii investors who has invested in the economy withdrew the money then india have to pay a huge amount right so this will create a shake in the economy that is the reason we prefer fdi right so when a company situated in one country makes a investment in a company situated in abroad we call that as fdi okay same way when foreign companies make investment in the stock market of a country we call that as fii and entry and exit is difficult for fdi because huge amounts has been invested in the firms only when they get the profit then they decide to exit out of the market right whereas in the fii the entry and exit is easier now see fdi brings long term capital employment opportunities 
management control whereas FII brings only short term capital sometimes FII may be long term capital as well FII will not create any employment or it will not give you any management control right see in the case of FII sometimes the technology would also be transferred to the country right whereas in the case of FII it is only the funds which are transferred okay then what is the consequences of FDI in the case of FDI it increases the GDP of the country so we have already seen what is GDP so you have to tell me how FDI is increasing the GDP of the country okay see it is going to give you the employment opportunity so more people are going to earn money obviously the GDP will increase right whereas in the case of FII it is increasing only the capital amount which is available in the country okay now see in the case of FDI what happens we target a particular sector it's not that any foreign direct investor comes to India and he thinks that he will invest in all the sectors he will not think like that foreign direct investment is targeted to a specific industry whereas foreign institutional investment does not have any specific industry wherever the shares wherever the stocks are higher it buys it right and FDI will have a control over the company whereas FII will not have the control over the company right see the next important thing in the external sector is balance of payments so in the balance of payments you have current account and the capital account we have already seen what is a current account what is a current account it is for a short term period right when it is talking about something for a short term period then we call it as a current account right here what does it mean we'll see into it first what is a balance of payment see the balance of payment is a record of all the economic transactions between one country record of all the economic transactions between one country and the rest of the world usually for a one year is called as the balance of payment see all the economic activities be it a trade or a service all the economic services will be included in the balance of payment okay so the balance of payment is of uh, the account is of two types current account and the capital account see current account records transfers of goods and services see which means the current account is going to deal with the balance of trade what is balance of trade balance of trade means it is talking about the import and the export of goods okay we call that as a balance of trade balance of services services may be what travel income on investment maybe the services right any kind of services be it be okay then the other services may be donations the other things which includes in the current account may be donations given by any other country okay and the grants given by any other country right those comes under current account so current account current account includes balance of trade balance of services services includes travels income on investment and any kind of services and the other part in the current account is your donations and grants see when this current account okay is also talking about the export and import only so when you send more amount of goods than you buy the amount of goods then you have surplus amount of money in your hand right so balance of trade means exports is higher than the imports 
okay balance of services is also same the export of services is higher than the import of services okay the current account surplus means the export of goods and services is higher than the import of goods and services we call that as current account surplus right we are talking about current account surplus which means the export of goods and services is higher okay what if if the current account is in deficit see current account deficit means the import of goods and services is higher than the export of goods and services which means your current account balance would be in negative values okay so in that case how do you manage the current account so in that case current account is managed by taking the money from the capital account okay so capital account includes fdi fii and the government loans okay same way capital account also have capital account surplus and capital account deficit when the fdi and fii into the india or higher than the amount which is going out of india we call it as capital account surplus okay so always remember the current account deficit is managed by the money from the capital account okay see capital account will show the transfer of claim of money or titles to the investment between the country and to the rest of the world what does it says basically it says the amount of money which is coming inside to the india and which is going outside of india right see a current account deficit is financed through the net capital inflow this is what you have to keep in your mind now what is meant by trade deficit trade deficit is nothing but this balance of trade it is talking about this when the export of goods is lesser than the import of goods we call it as what we call it as trade deficit see in your exams how can be the questions in the balance of payment see they may ask you what is fii what is fdi they may ask you questions like this or they may ask you what is the balance of trade what is the balance of services as well i remember one of the preliminary question is like what is the balance of payment balance of payment includes all the transactions of goods and services right but did i say the definition like that no balance of payment includes all the economic transactions only that it means that it also includes donations grants and the government loans right so the questions may be like this or else what will they do they will say that a person is coming and investing in india it comes under which account right so there was also a question uh, in the previous year a person is coming to watch a cricket match in india okay what account does it comes into so basically for all these type of questions you need to understand what is a balance of payment what is a current account and a capital account okay so as i told you balance of payment means it is talking about all the economic transactions with the outside world in a particular year okay then the balance of payment is divided into current account and the capital account right see you should understand that budget is calculated in the terms of rupees whereas this balance of payment is calculated in the terms of dollars okay here current account which includes the balance of trade balance of services so you should know what is the balance of trade the difference between the balance of trade and the balance of services 
and the difference between the balance of trade and the balance of payments as well balance of trade is one of the component in the current account which is talking only about the export and the import of goods whereas the balance of payment is including both the current account and the capital account okay there may be also a question what if the current account is going in deficit okay so you should be knowing that the current account is if it is in deficit you will not have money to buy the products right you will be importing right you will not have any money to give for the imports but you cannot leave it like that right so in that case what will you do you will finance it from the capital account right so you should know that when there is a current account deficit you will be financing it through capital account okay see this is about the balance of payments all right there are few more words which are associated with the external sector the first word or the first term is devaluation what is devaluation when the government is depreciating the domestic currency in the outside world we call that as devaluation which means what which means say for example initially 1 dollar was 60 rupees now after devaluation what will happen 1 dollar will be equal to 70 rupees it is reducing the value of domestic currency why will the government do this see the government will take devaluation step to increase its exports okay so during such a situation what has to be done is the export oriented industries should increase its production right this is what devaluation is what is revaluation see revaluation means same when the currency of the country is increased the value of the indian currency if it is increased with the dollar in such a scenario we call it as what in such a scenario we call it as revaluation right so what is the use of devaluation see devaluation will improve the scenario of balance of payment how see i am devaluing my currency which means my exports is going to increase which means my balance of payment if it is in deficit what will happen that will become surplus or the deficit will get reduced right that will get reduced so devaluation will majorly help in improving the situation of current account in the balance of payments right now when you talk about appreciation and depreciation the country's currency value is getting reduced by the market forces then you call that as a depreciation okay same way when the country's currency value is increasing because of the market forces then you call it as appreciation but same thing when it is done by the government we call it as devaluation and revaluation right so see these are the terms and the basic concepts which are associated with external sector which you need to know before reading into any books or the newspapers right so in external sector we have talked about the exchange rates then we have talked about near and read then we have talked about the balance of payments which includes current account and the capital account thank you